Ryan with Tierney, again, here to talk about Class VR, one of our educational focused virtual reality solutions. So they come in kits of four, eight, or more. We actually have a charge cart that can hold up to 30, so storage and charging. But as far as a hard case, there's cases of four or eight, so those hard cases not only charge, but they store. So if schools, a lot of schools are moving these from building to building, or even within building, it's a, it's a nice solution to make sure that the Class VR units stay intact. A couple key points with Class VR that I would like to reference and, and, and talk to you about. Number one is, I mentioned it earlier, this is a educational focused virtual reality solution. So you're going to hear once I get into the portal, talking about the content, the management, not only device management, but the ability for the teacher to decide when student or group of students can see certain content. The teacher has the ability to make it a teacher-led experience or at any point in time with a single click in the portal, he or she can allow the students to go experience the, the virtual reality experiences on their own. Also, ClassVR has the ability to upload your own created or curated virtual reality or augmented reality content. Not only can you create using a 360 degree camera or either software or online tool to create 3D models for an augmented reality experience, but there are some databases online that you can leverage as well. So ClassVR allows you in their portal to kind of puzzle piece together the different libraries and I'll reference those libraries here in a little bit. And also there's a differentiation element and aspect to this. So we're going to dive right into the portal. First things first, this portal has two main functionalities. It has the ability for the teacher to plan and then deliver. So the planning side is what teachers are, are very familiar with is you know, creating your lesson, identifying the content, the order of the content, et cetera. So in the portal, you actually have the ability to organize content and there's various libraries to do that. Within the portal here, there are libraries, I'm just going to go from the bottom up here, libraries, so there's a Class VR library. Within this portal, there are, there's content provided by Class VR to you to be able to use in your classrooms. So the content types, you have virtual reality images, you have video simulations, you have 3D models that you're able to, to leverage in your classroom. But outside of that Class VR library, they do have a global community of resources and playlists that any user, teacher, you know, curriculum provider, administrator, et cetera, can create and organize their own content and share it with any other user in the world. So there is a community library as well. That community library is different and supplemental to the Class VR library. So a different library, different content created and shared by other users around the world. I mentioned earlier the ability to upload your own created or curated content and then also to collaborate and share within your own school or district. So you have a personal library. That personal library allows you to actually, under the My Cloud area, to upload your own content. Again, that might be something that you capture using a 360 degree camera or create with something like Tinkercad or Vectary or something that's even more complicated. But then you have the ability to upload those models into the system. Right below that, you have a shared environment. So that's where I can actually access the library on what other teachers in my school or district have shared. So I'm able to leverage content from other teachers that are using the same curriculum and maybe teach the same grade level in my school or district. So again, the library at the bottom, you have Class VR library, content that comes with the system. You have a global library, that's global. Everybody or every teacher or content uh, provider or curriculum person or whoever <laughs> might be creating it, content, you can, you can uh, access that content there. And then you have a personal and a shared. So personal again is your content and shared is content that other teachers in, this, in your organization or district have shared with you. So we talked about the plan area within the portal. There's also a deliver tab. So the deliver tab is where the teacher actually can facilitate the learning experience. So planning, you created your lesson, you cr uh, created your playlist, which is a grouping of, of individual virtual reality or augmented reality assets to be able to use in your class. In the deliver section on the right hand side, you will see all the 
the uh, virtual reality headsets that are in your class. So active means they're up on somebody's face and they're actively interacting with the content. Connected means that the device is ready to go, like this one. It's just not on a student's face. And then disconnected means those are Class VR headsets that you have access to. They're just not turned on. To take this from a connected device to an active device, there's two ways you can do it. You can put it on your face, or one really nice thing about Class VR is there's a proximity sensor in between the two lenses. That is a huge benefit when it comes to having these headsets available all day. There's a lot of other solutions out there that are mobile device based. And as you know, students have to put those to sleep, turn them off or whatever to make sure that they last the whole day or even last a few hours. With Class VR, that proximity sensor identifies when somebody's using it. It turns on the experience and when they put it down, it just puts that device to sleep. To actually deliver content, there's a lot of different action buttons, but this little arrow airplane button, that will actually send all of this content to the device that's connected. So when I do that, there's, that's going to go ahead and it's going to ask, do I want to send the playlist? And then within, depending what type of content or how much content you do have, um, within a second to a minute, that content is going to load on those student devices want you to be aware that the type of content that you're sharing to the headsets will impact how much time it takes to load. So once I've done that, I just want to reference two more key points within the portal. So number one, there is a class view option at the bottom. This class view option allows the teacher to see a thumbnail of every viewer in his or her classroom. So if I had 30 headsets running in my classroom, I would see 30 different thumbnails. And to bring a thumbnail up and make it available for users without a headset on, you just click it. So you can minimize and maximize pretty easily when you're doing that. So that you can actually see what I'm looking at inside of my headset. Now, another reason this, this class view feature is nice, or a couple reasons is, if a teacher needs a model, you know, how to actually use the headset at the beginning. Most kids will just take and run, but there is a small subset of students, about 10% of students can get a little nauseous with video. So they can still experience what everybody else is looking at by using this class view feature and not have to have the headset up against their face. So there's a preview mode. So the preview mode is much like Google Expeditions. And, and so a lot of people say, hey, can I see what everybody's looking at at the same time? Can I select a point of reference that I want everybody to look at? The answer is yes. So this right here is more of a guided experience. So if I press play on any of my resources here, you will now see that there is one headset that is on and that is accessing the content. So this is a teacher-led experience. If the student tries to get out, there's a back button on the headset, it will not let them do that. They are guided <laughs> into this experience. But I mentioned earlier with a single click of the mouse, then the, the teacher can make it a student-led experience. That's very much different. A lot of the other virtual reality experiences that are on the market is there are a lot of teacher-led only or student-led only, but they don't provide both options, the teacher-led and student-guided experience. So to take it from a teacher-led into a student-guided, I'm just going to click the home button. That will take me there. Now if I go back to class view, you will see that the student now is able to select. So what I'm going to do, just to give you an idea, I'm going to put my headset on. So when I'm looking in the headset, I have the ability to select with the trigger on the right hand side or do a thumbs up gesture to select the content. So if I wanted to see what the inside of a cockpit looked like, I would just go ahead, do a thumbs up, and it would take me inside of a 737. And I can also see what's behind me by just going ahead and turning my head slowly left or right and that will allow me to see what's behind me. A lot of other systems, you actually have to turn your whole body to see what's behind you. As you can see, Class VR offers a lot of instructional value in the classroom and allows teachers the ability to manage a learning experience, but when needed, supplies the student the ability to drive their own learning. If you have any additional questions about bringing Class VR to your classroom, pricing, 
etc. Please feel free to reach out to your account executive today.